Now the next story, uh, Jackie, is pretty pretty big all over the, the media. Uh, Quasi Quartain. Uh, this is on the, the on the left. It's, it's the front page of the Mail on Sunday. I'm the wrong sort of black man for Labour. And inside, we've got the story that was uh, all over social media yesterday, which is the, the Daily Mirror putting a picture of another man uh, in, in, that isn't quasi quarting and him saying, that isn't me. <laughs> um, and it says they grovel over quasi photo um, what, what's your What's your view on, on what's happening there well, with quasi quarting no, I'm not really laughing. I'm actually hysterical at this point about, about the state of our dialogue about race. Because when this story was popping out, um, I, I was inundated with, in particular, white men explaining to me very slowly what anti-Black racism was about, you know? I mean, one of the problems here <clears throat> is that, uh, I mean, it, it was always been crap of course, the way we talk about race. But recently, with the way that anti-Semitism has been weaponized and the way that anti-Semitism has been put on the top of a hierarchy of racism, it's even been more corrupted. So, I, I, you know, I'm gonna take a little, just a little bit of time to explain what I actually think about this because the first thing you've got to understand is that race as we know it is a totally a social construct. Now, what does that mean? It means it's made up by those who have power for a function. It has a social function. It has no biological meaning. If it did, black people and white people couldn't have babies together. That's what, you know, Race as we see it, which actually what, we, what we're talking about is phenotype difference, it's color, it's the size of your nose, it's the size of your lips, are totally, totally superficial differences between people. So the first thing you've got to learn, it's a social construct. The second thing that you've got to think of is, you know, why are we having this discussion now? I noticed in, Sorry, I laughed about this. In the article, it said, his Ghanaian, his Ghanaian parents were very upset by him being called superficially black. But can I tell you, if it was one of my kids who was talking and acting the way uh, Quasi is, I would be more than upset about it. I mean, we have lost the difference, haven't we, between people being upset and racism. What was said to him was not racism. It's something he might get upset about. It's something that his mummy and daddy wouldn't like to hear, but it's not racism. And, you know, let's just think of some of the famous and respected black thinkers who have said extremely similar things. Malcolm X, Look at his famous speech, it's online. You can get it, it's a brilliant video. It's called The House Negro and the Field Slave. And what, it, that, it, what he's talking about then is the way that the power structures of slavery split black people up into class, different class sectors. The House Negro, who would be allowed in the house given all sorts of privileges, and who would then often think he was better than the field Negro, who had very little contact with the white people up in the house and were treated often by the house Negroes as if they were animals. And uh, listen to it by Malcolm X, but not even just Malcolm X. One of the leading, not just black intellectuals, intellectuals in the world, Cornell West, called Obama a very similar thing. Are these people racist or are they talking about the actual way that power works and the way that black people are used in our society? White liberals performing their anti-racism by yet again telling black people what they can and cannot say. Actually, Rupert Hack was dead on right. He is 
superficially black. That's what he is. His class interests aren't black. His economic interests aren't black. His cultural in interests aren't black. But what's really interesting in this is how quickly Starmer jumped to expel her. You got all sorts of people saying really unpleasant things about black people in the Labour Party. They're not touched. You, you know, it's, it's open season on black people. And of course, what this article points to is the lack of diversity in Labour. I mean, it's almost an embarrassment, isn't it? But you know, it, this is about, this is how racism works. And what we've got to be careful is confusing identity politics, which is what the right use as a weapon against that with our discussion on racism, which is about power and who has it. In those terms, Quasi is as white as snow. Right. Yeah, it was very interesting what you say about uh, Malcolm X. Well, I, I, that book, uh, his, his uh, autobiography is really interesting. Lots of stuff in, in there. Um, thank, thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Um, <laughs> can, now, I add, can I just add one thing? And this yeah. tells you how bad it's got, right? Just, just as a little thought. When we're dealing with Jews in the Labour Party, we're told that to, 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 to speak about anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism because all Jews identify with Israel. So what we're saying is all Jews think the same. But when, when we actually say in terms of being black, we think about blacks as being a group of people who would mostly look at Quasi and see him as white. We're told, no, all blacks don't have a joint interest. What we're talking about here is joint interests and Quasi does not reflect the joint interests of black people.